same folks that have made the first two, and it's bigger and better. Are there it's, new dinosaurs in this? Yeah, one? there's a new guy on the block, a Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus. Oh man, <laughs> do not mess with a Spinosaurus. Now is that worse than the Tyrannosaurus? Hey, he has a fight with the T-Rex, which I personally was sick of, with his big square Hollywood jaw and the star of so many movies. Right, right, right. And Spinosaurus kicks his butt. Mm -hmm. well, here we go. Here's the scene. What's happening? I assume the plane has crash landed. Yeah, we were trying to take off, and uh, we clipped the tail of a Spinosaurus, and he's mad. Okay, let's take a look. Here we go. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now, for today's video, I wanted to talk about something from Jurassic Park 3. Now, before we go any further, I gotta go ahead and tell you guys that I am kinda sick. I've got some kind of a cold, so if you can hear it in my voice, just know this is what I'm dealing with. That being said, for nearly 20 years now, a ton of people have debated, argued, and discussed the Spinosaur's role in the third film in the series. Some people love it, some people hate it, and some others are somewhere in between. Whatever your feelings on this super strong dinosaur may be, I'm sure that many of you have wondered why it chose to continuously hunt down Dr. Grant and the others during their adventure on Isla Sorna. For some reason, it always seemed like wherever the humans would go on Site B, the Spinosaurus would soon follow. They unexpectedly bump into it multiple times throughout the film, which has caused a lot of people to wonder why this animal is giving our protagonist the Jason Voorhees treatment. You see, with other dinos like the JP3 pack of raptors, we understand that the reason they are pursuing the group is because Billy chose to steal their eggs in order to fund his next few digs with Alan Grant. So the motive behind their constant chase was always far more clear than what was going on with the Spino. Well, believe it or not, there actually is something of an answer to this old question, and you needn't look any further than the film itself to actually find it. Now, very early on in the movie, we're introduced to the Spinosaurus when we first land on the island. After running out of the woods waving his one good arm in a terrified panic, Cooper is soon attacked and killed by the animal in one swift movement. What follows is incredibly hard to see upon many viewings and can only be viewed coherently if you slow the film down to a crawl. But for just a single moment, once the plane pulls up into the air, you can actually see blood being torn out of the dinosaur's sail and all over the right of the frame around. For my entire life of having watched this movie, way before I ever started doing YouTube videos, I was always under the impression that the blood that we see get sprayed all over the windshield belonged to Cooper. But in reality, that is absolutely wrong. It was actually torn from the back of the Spino when the propeller clipped it mid-flight. This reveal has come extremely recently to me and was only brought about after a conversation that I had with Mike Tharm and Jurassic Collectibles. Mike had brought up the idea that he may have experienced something of a Mandela effect where he could have sworn that he remembered a scene in JP3 during its run in theaters, where we clearly see the Spino's sail getting seriously hit by the plane. I myself said that I remembered a specific scene from Jurassic Park 3 that isn't in any of the home media releases. For me, I have the specific image of a shot of baby pteranodons falling into the water in slow motion after Eric Kirby jumps onto Billy Brennan from the rocks. However, unlike the scene that I explicitly remember, mics can actually be found in the movie itself. You just have to really be looking out for it. With that being said, I've often seen several fans swear that the reason the Spinosaurus continues to pursue and chase the humans all over the island is because of the injury that was done to its sail. And like I said earlier, I never really believed any of that because I was always under the impression that the blood belonged to Cooper, but lo and behold, that just simply isn't the reality of it all. Couple this information with the statements by William H. Macy that plainly state that the Spino is very angry at them for hitting the dinosaur with their airplane, and you've got a pretty solid basis for what the creature's motives were in the entire movie. This dino was out to get revenge. After being run into with a surprise plane that came out of nowhere, I can't honestly say that I blame him. Believe it or not, after having typed all of this stuff up, had that conversation with those two guys, and gotten ready to do this video, I actually went back to look at an older video I did from 2017 that focused on the theory on whether or not there were two Spinosaurs on the island. And apparently, way back then, I'd already covered the fact that the blood came from the Spino instead of Cooper. For whatever reason, I never made the connection that this was the reason that the dinosaur was pursuing the humans on the island. Also, I somehow completely forgot that I took screen caps of the blood coming from the sail and even talked about it a while back. I don't know how I forgot about that, but I find that kind of odd. 
Anyways, I'd love to hear all of your own personal thoughts on this subject matter. With these statements being made and the photographic proof that backs up the fact that the animal was hit by the plane itself, do you personally believe that this was the motive that drove the Spinosaurus to pursue the humans all over Site B no matter where they went? Or do you have some other belief? Also, does anyone out there share my memory of the baby pteranodons falling into the water in slow motion after Eric jumps onto Billy? I might be going crazy here, but I swear I remember it in the theater like it was yesterday. Whatever your own thoughts, opinions, and Mandela effects may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I want to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Just the fact that you guys watch these videos and support my content means the world to me, and I want to make sure that all of you never forget that. Now I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to watch today's video, and hope that you all had fun. I'll see you all in the next one guys, and as always, take it easy.